Well, President Joe Biden has fulfilled another campaign promise. Uh, you know, during the 2020 Democratic Party primaries, he said that in the event he were to become president, nothing would fundamentally change. And he proved yet again that that is indeed the case because he has chosen to bomb Syria once again and also Iraq this time. Now, this isn't the most surprising news in the world. If you follow Joe Biden's career, he's always been a liberal hawk. You know, so it's not like I'm shocked. Nevertheless, this news is still deeply disturbing. And he gives this justification that this action was necessary in order to protect American troops in the region. But that really kind of sidesteps the entire issue of U.S. militarism in general. Uh, and it avoids the question, why are we there in the first place? Because as Mehdi Hassan puts it, the easiest way to protect U.S. forces in Iraq is for there to not be any U.S. forces in Iraq. So as time goes on, that justification looks weaker and weaker. But nonetheless, let's get to the details here. So Eric Schmidt of the New York Times reports, the United States carried out airstrikes early Monday morning in Iraq and Syria against two Iranian-backed militias that the Pentagon said had conducted drone strikes against American personnel in Iraq in recent weeks, the Defense Department said. At President Biden's direction, U.S. military forces earlier this evening conducted defensive precision airstrikes against facilities used by Iran-backed militia groups in the Iraq-Syria border region, the Pentagon spokesman John F. Kirby said in a statement. Mr. Kirby said the facilities were used by Iranian-backed militias, including Kataib Hezbollah and Kataib Saeed al-Shahuda, to store arms and ammunition for carrying out attacks against places where Americans were located in Iraq. There were no immediate reports of casualties, but the military after-action review is ongoing, Pentagon officials said. So there's that justification given to us by the Pentagon and the State Department. But also, I mean, it seems a little bit too coincidental, if you ask me, that this is happening right after Iran elects a hardliner who is anti-US, anti-West. And we also just so happen to block Iranian state TV. So, you know, the timing of this is incredibly sus, if you ask me. But I mean, of course, this is all just mere speculation. But the United States government has been incredibly hawkish towards Iran. And that hasn't changed since Biden took office, even though he ran on getting back into the Iran nuclear agreement after our government unilaterally withdrew and violated the terms of that agreement. But I do want to get to the response from Iraq. So they've condemned the airstrike, saying we condemn the U.S. air attack that targeted a site last night on the Iraqi-Syrian border, which represents a blatant and unaccountable violation of Iraqi sovereignty and Iraqi national security in accordance with all international conventions, said a spokesperson for the commander-in-chief of Iraq's armed forces, Prime Minister Mustafa al-Kadimi. Iraq renews its refusal to be an arena for settling accounts and clings to its right to sovereignty over its lands and to prevent it from being used as an arena for reactions and attacks, said the Iraqi statement. We call for calm and to avoid escalation in all its forms, stressing that Iraq will carry out the necessary investigations, procedures, and contacts at various levels to prevent such violations, the spokesperson added. So the statement from the Iraqi government is only the most reasonable thing in the world they're basically saying hey could you please not like use our territory as this proxy war between you and iran that'd be really great i mean if you want something to be uh, investigated we'll look into it regardless if you know the u.s government trusts iraqi intelligence i mean what they're asking for is for you to not bomb them to settle scores with iran so um you know this is predictable but it's still unacceptable and i'm really glad that ilhan omar actually decided to condemn this and she invoked the war powers act she said via twitter this constant cycle of violence and retribution is a failed policy and will not make any of us safer congress has authority over war powers and should be consulted before any escalation and she is exactly correct here it is congress's authority to make wars not the executive branch and I'm sorry, but this justification that they keep using, it's, uh, you know, as I stated, as time goes on, it gets weaker and weaker because you can't keep saying, well, you know, we had to do these uh, bombings to protect American troops when we shouldn't be there. There's no legitimate reason to still be there. It's been two decades. Bring them home. Bring them home. Why are we still there? If you bring them home, then you won't need to worry about their safety. But this keeps 
happening. And the same justification will be used because it works. You know, American citizens who don't necessarily know about the complexities of what's happening there, they think, well, of course, I want to protect American troops. I don't necessarily like war per se, but I mean, would bombing, you know, uh, these actors there, these uh, Iran-backed militias be worthwhile if it saves American lives? Sure. So this is basically their way of manufacturing consent. And on, on that note, you know, when the New York Times reports what the Pentagon and State Department says, I take all of that with a grain of salt, but I just assume automatically that they're lying. And until they provide me with evidence to the contrary, I believe that that's the case because the U.S. government has proven time and again to be untruthful. I mean, the whole reason why we're in Iraq to begin with is based on a fabricated lie, right? So, you know, this is deeply, deeply frustrating to see happen time and again, but I can't even pretend to be shocked because, you know, this is exactly what um, we expected with uh, Joe Biden. And it's not like if Bernie Sanders became president, that U.S. militarism would all, all you know, come to an end like that because the military industrial complex is sort of this like almost aut autonomous entity that operates by itself but still you know to have a president that is so bloodthirsty and hawkish it's just it, things like this are going to continue to happen